Welcome everybody to the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty, where today the Warhawks meet the New Mexico Lobos in this Mountain West Conference Clash. This marks the halfway point of this season and Kalispell is 5-0 and they've become the highest they've ever been ranked in school history, entering today at number 6. And on top of that, they're the only team in the conference this year that's in the top 25. They are the team to beat, so they know they're going to get everybody's best. It's time to play some football. Here we go. Kalispell and New Mexico. Starting the day on the return, Marty Belafonte with a spin toward the boundary, and he is taken down near the 30-yard line. A big reason why this team is undefeated is the play of freshman quarterback Brandon Warren, who has completed 78% of his passes this season. Here's an easy one, but no room for Jones on the tunnel screen. They've been calling that play quite often every week. Here's a handoff now, and Kyle Thomas runs left, and he'll get four. Kalispell now faced with a third and seven. From the empty look, Lobos drop eight in coverage. Warren chased, and he trips. Warren had his feet tangled with left tackle Bryce Wiley. Right as that pressure arrived, that's when the play started to really open up too. So it's a quick stop and excellent field position for the Lobos as they open up in their spread formation. Here is Goss on the give, and he'll get 11. You can expect to see a lot of spread option today. New Mexico is 3-1 with the number 7 rushing attack in college football. They are a very good running team that has had success against us in the past. This is Goss running up the middle again. Five yards for Brad Goss. TJ Daniels, the senior quarterback, will keep it this time as he's wrapped up by Shannon Evans, who is down in pain. Evans came in to make the tackle, and this could be a very big injury for this Kalispell defense to arguably their best player. Handoff now to Michael Lewis, who sweeps to the outside and delivers a stiff arm. Still fighting down to the 20, gain of 13. You know against New Mexico, you're going to see good running backs. And here's Daniels now with blockers leading the way. First down, or maybe not quite for TJ Daniels. Third and inches. Split shotgun look here. It's a give inside. Michael Lewis gets the first down. Lewis also handles the return duties for the Lobos. On first and goal. Hands off again, and that time Anthony Owens read the play. And here's some good news for Kalispell as Shannon Evans retakes the field at free safety. Second down, Goss up the middle. And there is Evans already back making plays as he fills in on the tackle. Third down now from the seven. Here's Daniels to throw it for the first time. Getting outside the pocket, tucks it, and lost the football. But it's recovered by John Townsend. And New Mexico keeps possession, it's fourth down. The Lobos score first, as Brandon Warren now lines up in the split shotgun look. He'll throw it short, this is caught by Bo Lee. He makes a rare reception for six yards. Third down and three here for Kalispell, two tight ends in the game. Warren underneath, that's a first down to Mike Harris, who has been a very solid all-around receiver for Kalispell this season. Give now to Kyle Thomas, and he gets some running room. It's a gain of nine. Kyle Thomas, still no touchdowns on the season, as Warren flips it back to Thomas, makes a move and lost the football. And this one is going to New Mexico. They recover. Thomas had made a nice move to find some daylight on this play, but you'll see it here again as he cuts inside a block. He basically jukes his way into a defender, and New Mexico gets another short field. Here's a first and 10. Daniels to Michael Lewis, left side, taken down by Hayes, who makes a really nice tackle. On second down, they go to a full house look. Play action, and Daniels throws it to Cole inside the 25-yard line. Gain of a dozen, and they move the chains again. Great start in front of their home crowd. Daniels will quickly tuck this and run outside, and is dragged down by Wesley Merrill. These linebackers really need to be careful today. Owens lines up now on the line. Daniels wants to scramble, and this time he'll lose three as Wesley Merrill meets him in the backfield. Still in this full house formation, here is the sweep to Lewis, trying to work out to his left, and he's met by Anthony Owens. That's back-to-back -back losses of three yards, 
Now it's third and 16. They could still get a first down, it's possible, but Daniels won six and the pass is incomplete. They just needed a little more room. Six nothing New Mexico with two field goals. While Kalispell's offense hasn't looked great, this is Troy Lee receiving the pitch for about three yards. He is immediately in for Kyle Thomas after the fumble. Third down and Warren throws complete to his speedy wide out Carl Joyce who has four touchdowns this season. And that's just receiving. On second down, Warren wants to work to his left and that's where the pressure meets him. It's a loss of four. Eric Quinn on the play. Kalispell going empty, Hayden John Charles in the game. And the three man rush once again arrives. It's gonna be a long day if they can't block three down linemen. New Mexico is dominating the early goings of this game, but they have luckily only gotten field goals. There's a great throw. Bobby Mason makes the catch. Excellent play for the Lobos. They'll hand it now to Goss, and he'll run over Glenn Hayes and finish strong. Again, crossing the 50. They're spending a lot of this early time in Kalispell territory. Play action. Off the rollout. It's caught by Tucker. Excellent throw again from TJ Daniels as he snuck that over a defender's head. He'll be throwing again on second down. Here's the rush and Daniels is crushed. Incomplete. They're starting to throw the football a bit more. Third and 10 now. Blitz sent, picked up. Daniels going for it all. And it's nearly intercepted in the end zone by James Hampton. Fourth down again. So they've gotten good field position, they've gotten good stops, but no touchdowns. Yet they still hold a two score lead over Kalispell as we will pause for a quick update. We have an upset here in the top 10 with Louisville defeating Clemson in a game that amassed over 100 points. Meanwhile here in Kalispell, we're just trying to get any points for our Warhawks as Troy Lee carries and gets four. He has been the more efficient back than Thomas, averaging 5.7 a carry to Thomas's 4.3. On second down, here's John Charles now with running room after the catch, and he'll get 21. He was not the type of tight end I thought would get all of these 20 plus yard plays. Now they pitch it, wait a minute, Lee throws it to Reggie Jackson, a halfback pass that only gets two yards. At least they tried. On second down, we have a rollout now. Warren away from pressure and intercepted by Wilson who recovered the fumble earlier. Second turnover for New Mexico. Wilson playing the underneath coverage and Warren just can't sneak this past him. Excellent job covering John Charles. And here are the Lobos once again. Great field position as Daniels breaks a tackle and picks up around seven yards. Here is a second and one now for New Mexico as Daniels will keep again. And there's Anthony Owens, good play. That's the discipline you need to stop the option. And now TJ Daniels is down. That was a big hit by Owens. He landed hard on that left shoulder, but now he clutches at his knee. That's never a good sight. They'll go from a senior to the freshman Aaron Givens who completes the pass on third down to Bobby Mason. That was a huge mess, I don't know how he caught that. Gibbons now on the keeper on second down as he gets caught from behind and that is Alex Hardy. So we're starting to see all three of those main linebackers make plays. Third and 11, Gibbons in trouble and he's going to the ground, sacked. Give that one to Anthony Owens. Kalispell gets the stop and they have a little time remaining now as now they have a full start. So this first half has just been terrible for this offense. We do see Justin Colbert in the game now at quarterback. And he doesn't like what he sees downfield and the rush will get there. He's sacked. This team just continuing to go backwards today. Second and 18, 46 seconds left and barely getting this throw off. It's incomplete for Hayden John Charles. They've gotten the pressure, they've contested passes and they've made it tough in the ground game. They're doing it all right. Third and 18, a sweep for Lee just to get something and they'll get seven yards and kick it right back to New Mexico. This is their worst starting field position of the game at their own 30 yard line. 33 seconds to go and returning to the game is TJ Daniels. 
And he looks like he's good to go as he runs for 14. They could still get another field goal or more perhaps if they keep moving the chains. Here goes Daniels again. This time he delivers the stiff arm and is wrapped up near midfield. So they'll have to use a timeout or hurry up and they'll opt to hurry to the line. 10 seconds left. Daniels again scrambling and slides. That will stop the clock with 8 seconds. Not quite where you want for field goal range here. Two seconds left. To the sideline, through the hands of Eaton. That would have gotten them where they wanted to be. So instead, they'll attempt a 60-yard field goal. And remember, Kalispell can return this, and they will. Here's Marty Belafonte with zeros on the clock. He'll angle to the near sideline, try to turn the corner, breaks a tackle, and goes down. So, this first half is in the books. New Mexico able to silence our offense, but they only get three field goals. Still, if they want to end our undefeated season, they're off to a good start. Welcome back, everybody. Let's hope this second half goes better for our offense, because New Mexico had them solved in the first half. There wasn't much that our Warhawks did well, as they turned the ball over two times and only gained 77 yards. On top of that, it's New Mexico football to start the third quarter, and here is Goss not getting much room. Actually, he had a lane, but opted to bounce the play instead. Third and nine for Daniels. Wanting the screen, he gets hammered instead. There's Marion Triplett, a three and out to open for New Mexico. Now, can Kalispell get something going? They should have some good field position. Marty Belafonte returning to the sideline and pushed out inside the 40. All right, perfect spot to go and get some points. Here's Brandon Warren in the shotgun as everyone converges on Lee. First down and more. Nice job by Amante Jones. Brandon Warren out for 26 yards. The biggest play for Kalispell today. Hands out to Troy Lee this time. He breaks a tackle and gets one. He's gotten this good opportunity, but hasn't found much room yet. The Warhawks are two of five on third down. They need nine. Warren sidesteps the rush, has room to run. Warren for the first and is hit inside the three. And Brandon Warren is down now on the sideline. Warren tried to get as much as he could here, and he is now down and out of the game with Justin Colbert entering. Ball at the two. McKinley met and brought down for a big loss back at the five. David Wilson continues to make plays. Second and goal, now a throw for Colbert. Floating to the end zone, touchdown! What a throw from Justin Colbert! A perfect back shoulder fade to Amante Jones. Watch this again, maybe even twice. He throws this from the opposite hash, so he has plenty of room and puts it in the perfect spot. Early diagnosis looks like a shoulder injury for Brandon Warren, so there's a chance he could still return today, but now Kalispell's on the board, and they're only down two. Cody Cole hit by Anthony Owens, who now has five tackles for a loss. Third and 12 for New Mexico as they set up a screen here for Goss. Gets up field and can't keep his balance as he gets nine, and they'll have to kick again. Warhawks take over, and number five, Justin Colbert in at quarterback. Here's some room now. It's Troy Lee getting some daylight out to the 47-yard line. Gain of 12. New set of downs, and they'll set up a screen. And the pass is out just in time for Lee, who gets a hard hit at the end of a five-yard play. For the first time since his fumble, Kyle Thomas is back in to get the handoff. He gets a gain of two. Third down here for Justin Colbert. Again, just three on the rush, and a quick throw complete to Amante Jones with nobody covering the flat for New Mexico. Kyle Thomas, the back, he stays in to protect. Picks up the rush nicely. Colbert resets and finds Joyce at the sideline for 23. The Warhawks are back on the move in the red zone. Sweep Troy Lee, and he doesn't get the block he was counting on from Sean Gallagher. Troy Lee the back as Kalispell goes with a three wide set. Here's the rush picked up. Colbert to the end zone and nearly picked. They did a good job there giving him a pocket and I don't like how Jones ran this route. Not really giving Colbert much of a chance. 
But Callus Bell adds three, so now it's 10 to nine. They have taken the lead. New Mexico having some struggles in this quarter on both sides. Callus Bell now trying to make a play on third and seven. And they will get to Goss again. They sent Shannon Evans and basically had the perfect blitz for this play. Great defense for Kalispell in this half, and the offense is beginning to look like themselves again. Here's a strike to Amante Jones as he makes the catch, and they'll call that a first down. 25 yards on five catches for Jones, not the best average. Colbert first and 10 to the sideline, that's a catch. Nice job, Hayden John Charles for 12. Two tight ends now for the Warhawks. Handing it off to Lee, and what a play to stop him for only two. We now make our way to the fourth quarter. It's Justin Colbert in at quarterback with a wide open Carl Joyce inside the 20. This one goes for 23. They're finding their pass rhythm again. Lee on the carry now cuts up the middle and he'll get six, which is one of his better carries of the day. Second down and four, again straight ahead as Lee spins his way down to the two yard line. Gold to go. Colbert makes some adjustments on first down. Against the blitz, floats it for John Charles. Touchdown. Two touchdown passes in this half for Justin Colbert, who hasn't played much recently, but he's acting like he didn't take any time off. He looks great today. 16 to nine, Kalispell going for two. They want that nine point lead. Jump ball for Joyce. Knocked down by Terrell Patrick. So it's still a seven point game but New Mexico's offense needs to get it going and they have done nothing in this half. Nice play by Glenn Hayes. Kalispell showing blitz on third down, here they come. Daniels going deep down the middle, it's broken up, incomplete. Glenn Hayes on the play again. Kalispell once more takes over after a quick drive by New Mexico. Tight end screen, here's John Charles to the 50, breaks a tackle and is spun down for a gain of nine. Two tight ends on the field and Colbert fakes it on second and inches. He wants it all, deep shot, John Charles! No, it's knocked down by Alex Wynn. That one needed some more distance. Third and inches, now they'll give it to Troy Lee and he lost the football! Kalispell somehow keeps it, Colbert recovers. There was a defender who tried to jump on it and just missed. Still, that's a big stop for New Mexico. It keeps this a seven point game. Daniels now trying to find some room and now he lost the football and Kalispell takes it back. Wesley Merrill on the hit. And New Mexico, who just got the big turnover, is put right back into this same scenario. And now it's gonna be Terrence McKinley. He has the best ball security in this backfield. Here's a big third and eight. The rush can't get to Colbert. And there's an open look to John Charles. They attempt to rip it out, but John Charles secures the football. And it's first and goal, Warhawks. Here's a first down throw. It's Harris on the screen, and he maybe gets one. Going compact now with Bo Lee in at fullback. Left side goes McKinley. Breaks one tackle, but can't break the plane. Third down. One more shot at it. Colbert turns to his right. McKinley breaks the plane. Touchdown. Credit to this defense. They've been tough all day, but Callis Spell showed why they're one of the best offenses in college football in this second half. Great effort as they've made it 23 unanswered points. The pressure is really on now for TJ Daniels with this game falling out of reach in a way, unless they can make something happen here, but they haven't done much in this half. Here's a screen for Goss and there's just nothing, nothing out there for New Mexico. Fourth and eight, game may be on the line. Three on the rush, Daniels looking to scramble and there's Anthony Owens with the exclamation point. This might be the best game of his career. 11 tackles, five for a loss, including a sack. Kalispell takes over, and they'll throw a bubble screen now. It's Mike Harris getting some help from Amante Jones. Nice play. They're almost able to run out this clock as they toss it. Here's McKinley, who's not very speedy, but he breaks a tackle and gets to the outside for 13. First down, Kalispell. They could kneel out the clock now but Kalispell loves to give these backups some reps. 
You never know when it's their turn to play, and it's nice to know what they can do beforehand. So Rashawn Phillips hands it to Marty Belafonte, and the freshman is in for the touchdown. Kalispell continues to pour it on in this second half, 30 unanswered points. And now it's a great chance to see some backup defenders that might play as early as next season. I don't know how Daniels got this away or how Davis made the catch, but here we are. It's a gain of 14. Less than a minute to go now, and the Lobos are all out of their timeouts. Floating this one deep, and Cody Cole somehow makes the catch. Michael Hunter had a great chance to break that one up at the least. 30 seconds left. Here's Daniels, wanting it all. Nice play by Oscar Bryant. Heads up awareness to adjust to the ball in midair. Fourth and 10, here's Daniels, last chance. End zone now, and it's nearly picked and then nearly cut. This one's over. Great game for Kalispell, or rather, great half. You play one great half, sometimes it's enough, and today it was. Kalispell gets it done 30 to nine, with Justin Colbert playing the most he has in a long time and helping lead this offense to victory. New Mexico's defense did impress me for a lot of this game. And I didn't want to put Brandon Warren back in because the injury concerns are there. He had to leave once. I was not going to rush him back in. But also, just seeing all the big hits they were laying, I didn't think it was worth it to throw him back out there if the option game wasn't even doing well. And once I saw that back shoulder fade from Colbert, I was pretty sure he'd do the job for us today. And that he did. And then there's our defense, who made up for our slow start offensively, holding New Mexico to only nine, which is impressive considering two turnovers and all the field position they were able to get. No touchdowns for New Mexico, and our linebackers made all kinds of plays. Anthony Owens had maybe the best game of his career, and we limited the big plays from New Mexico. Let's talk recruiting now, with one player making a decision this week, it's Sung Ho Kwok from Kalispell, who's actually going to Boise State. I didn't think that with our quarterback depth, he was necessary to recruit aggressively, although he would make for an interesting running back prospect. He also would have been great for one of the option schools. As far as the top of our board goes, we are in great shape for players like Maurice Collins. We're now in first place for Rick Thomas. I'm hoping that the visit soon with Baraka Frederic goes well. We have some of these battles that could end in the near future, and that would open up some points to maybe scout some other talent or to go more aggressive for others. I did find one receiver this week who is really interesting from Waco, Texas. It is Andy Marquardt, who has good speed and is a great route runner, and we could use more players that could stretch the field on this offense. There is also free safety Stephen Bailey from East Cleveland, Ohio, and I want to see if it's possible for us to recruit anybody from this state, but I do like him as an all-around safety prospect for the future. Next week, we take on Air Force. Again, we face the option teams back-to-back, Next year, I want to do something to change up our schedule because it's just so repetitive. But for Air Force, you know you get more of a traditional option offense that run the flex bone. So it's very different than the spread option we see from New Mexico. If our linebackers are as disruptive as they were today, it's going to be a very long day for Doug McDonald and the Falcon offense. Overall, I'd say that New Mexico's roster is better, but there is one potential game breaker on this team that I am a little concerned about in this game, and that is A.J. Whitworth, their senior running back. He is extremely fast and elusive, and our defense does miss tackles from time to time. So hopefully we can limit the big plays and continue our undefeated run as Kalispell is now ranked number four in the country. Thank you all for watching this episode in the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty. I know you want to see episodes come out more frequently, so I will have the next one out at or before this coming Saturday. Leave your feedback below in the comment section, especially about the quarterback situation. And also leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.